Good evening and welcome to the Selectmen's meeting of December 19th, 2017. The first item is a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay, we have um, Karen Garish here, and she's going to do a uh, memorial sentiment for Lorraine Yetten. Yep. yep, that mic works. Do we want to invite the family up? And the family can come up. I would love that. Thank you. Right up here would be great. Okay. <laughs> it's my great pleasure to be here tonight on behalf of both the Maine House and the Senate as Acton's representative in the Maine House of Representatives to present this legislative memorial sentiment for Lorraine. Um, one thing that's not on the sentiment that um, was interesting, she and I both wrote for years for the paper. I covered Lebanon. And I was just a young girl, and she helped me quite a bit when I came on because she wrote for Acton. So um, I knew Lorraine for about 15 years. So it's a real pleasure to present this to the family. <clears throat> In memoriam, whereas the 128th legislature has learned with deep regret of the death of Lorraine, Yetten of Acton. Mrs. Yetten was an integral part of her community. She participated in the Farm Bureau Women's Group, was a 4-H leader, served as Acton librarian, and drove a school bus for the Acton School Department, and she was known for her knowledge of Acton town history. She served as secretary to the Board of Selectmen and on the Board of Selectmen. She also was a very active member of the Acton Congregational Church, contributing to several boards and committees, the choir, and the Sunday service children's stories. Mrs. Yen will be long remembered and sadly missed by her families and friends. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, pause in a moment of understanding and prayer to inscribe this token of sympathy and condolence to all who share this great loss and respectfully request that when the legislature adjourns on this date, it do so in honor and lasting tribute to the deceased. So I'd like to present this to Lorraine's family. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. I miss her. Uh, on behalf of the family, we're very, very pleased to accept this special award. Um, we've known all our lives how awesome she was, and now we're even more aware of how much she meant to everybody in the town. She loved the town, but it's been especially obvious to us in the last couple of weeks that the town really loved her as much, too. So. Um, this is going to go up out in, the, out in the hall if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, Jennifer's put a very nice little tribute to Lorraine up out there with her picture. Uh, her plaque that, that she was awarded for 40 years of service to the town of Acton and some other pictures. And this will go up too so that it can be shared with everybody in the community who shared her with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. That 
Yes, that was really nice. Uh, thank you, Karen, for coming out to do that. You take it. Okay, I'd like to see, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion we approve the agenda. I'll second that. All in favor? Um, approval of the minutes of, let's see, I think we have November 14th and the December 5th? Mm -hmm. December 5th. A motion to approve both of those minutes. Make a motion we approve November 14th and December 5th minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Department head committee chair updates. Good evening, Williams, Wharton Finance. Um, the tentative schedule that was handed to us uh, by email, uh, I think it was about two or three weeks ago now it's been, uh, certainly is a marked improvement compared to last year's. And, we had two people who, who uh, thought that uh, uh, it was fine and nobody else had any objection. And having gone over last year's schedule and this year's schedule, there's a marked improvement and I appreciate it. The problem I think comes up uh, at the joint meeting, which is held on Saturday, and as uh, I remember last year, um, there was a time uh, element that department heads were given X number of minutes. And so when we wanted afterwards to go into something more deeply with the department, uh, we had a difficult time asking or getting the department head to come before us. And so I hope this can be solved this year by, by the Board of Select re reminding some of the department heads that we may very well ask them to come before us as a part of our uh, looking at, at line item items in their budget as well. Um, the only other thing is I had sent a, a note uh, to Ms. Rue about the donations. Uh, two people suggested that we keep the questionnaire for everybody. Uh, and I think uh, two meetings ago or two weeks ago, uh, it was suggested that we not do that. And certainly I think with the amount of, uh, of time that we want to uh, save in terms of just doing paperwork, I would agree with that with some exceptions. And I sent a, uh, at least a suggested little one-page questionnaire that we could send out uh, to, first of all, everybody that was on the list last year, and they would indicate sending it back to us whether or not they no longer need any money, which I doubt seriously very many people will check that box off. Or the second box was that, that they have had a change in their mission or they're requesting more money, in which case they would be sent a questionnaire to fill out again. And, of course, the, uh, the other one are brand new people who uh, have never uh, been on the list before that would get a questionnaire. Um, and so I would ask that that be considered uh, as far as uh, that. One of the main things is one of the other options is that there's no changes, uh, same mission, same amount of money we're requesting. Thank you very much. And they, they stay in the game without having to do any more paperwork. Um, the second thing was that we had requested is getting some feedback from uh, the Board of Selectmen about a ceiling on donations. Um, we tried very hard this past year to keep donations down to a 1.5% um, of the uh, projected budget for, for, this, for this present fiscal year. And we did a very good job in doing that, but uh, as long as the, um, the list grows each year for people asking for money, and the amount of money uh, seems to slowly go up. My question to the, uh, to the uh, Board of Selectmen is, could you give us some sort of a feeling uh, or a guideline as to how to vet this, either in terms of limiting it totally to 1 point or 1 1.5, whatever percent you all feel is, is important, and or a dollar ceiling. Uh, don't go over 80,000 for the whole uh, Chickabang, something like that. 
uh, that will give us much more of a, of a ability to to, uh, to do something that you all would be in favor of rather than having this unlimited amount of new donors that can come on and asking for more and more money. Next year is going to be a hard year fiscally for the United States. We're going to have more people using food, food banks. We're going to have all sorts of other new things that are going to perhaps require some changes in how we divide the money out and knowing that there is a limit that we have to, uh, to abide by will certainly be of some help to us. Thank you very much. So actually, before you step back, um, so the board did receive both of those emails. Um, so you, I, I forwarded you the letter yeah. to review, mm -hmm. and um, I know we talked briefly about the, the caps. Um, different boards have different ideas in regards to, you know, let the voters, you know, let them make a recommendation based on what they think and let the voters make a decision. But you had some thoughts on the letter as well? The letter, I, I you know, I, I thought it was a great idea at first, but then I thought it was kind of unnecessary as Jen sends a letter to all of the donations um, or the requests that we send sent in the past, a reminder like... We'll send a copy of the timeline once it's approved. Yeah. And so those go to the 501c3s that request to have requested in the past and my feeling was that instead of dangling the carrot out if you want more money check off this box and, and fill out this paperwork which I, I feel like in, instead of doing it that way that if somebody did ask for more money um, that you would invite them in uh, if it was certainly over that would a certain be fine amount too we'd have to have copies of the last year's as well as this year's to be able to know that or some sort of a way of knowing that they're asking for more yep. for more money and they would probably <coughs> excuse me probably have a change in their mission they're either doing more for people in acton they're doing more for something or one of the other agencies that they work with are, is no longer available and they're doing it all by themselves. There should be some reason why they're changing their, their mission and that would be fine too. It makes no difference to us as long as, as we can look primarily at those newbies or in people who are asking for more money. The new, the new um, 501Cs that do ask, I do believe, should be vetted like the others have gone through. But I think that if we've already vetted them, I don't th see the need to do it again unless they've asked for more money. In that case, we would call them and have them Some come of in. the ones that we had last year, though, we did not give the amount that they requested. And so they may, in fact, want to go ahead and ask for that original request. Uh, and we do have a track. We well, do yeah, have. And that's the, and sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's the conversation that the board needs to have. I mean, do you, you guys have to decide, are you going to put on the warrant what the social service what they request and then let your your board and their board make recommendations are you not going to are you going to put a ceiling on it like he mentioned and not put their full request on so that kind of needs to be <coughs> talked about and, and and decided first so that when we send these letters out we can say you know instead of leaving it open to send us your request here's the timeline you need to meet you need to make a decision as to whether or not what you're going to move forward. That would be fine. Any way you want to do it, any permutation and combination. The other thing that I would not like to see, and that is to leave it blank and have it be decided by the, by the annual meeting because, uh, you know, everyone's in favor of motherhood and apple pie. And if you give everybody whatever they want yeah, but for I as mean, much money as they want. But that's the right of the voter. I mean, the purpose of the warrant finance and the selectmen are to make recommendations underneath. And I think at every annual town meeting, if, let's just say somebody asks for a 1000 and they put the original request on, if both of your committees or boards make recommendations of 500 I mean, people are going to ask and they're going to hear you, but it's still mm. their right to approve the 1000 Oh, yes, of if course. That's what the board but wants leaving it blank. And let oh, no, it would never be blank. How I'm much, sorry. How yeah. much would you like? Oh, no, 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 no. There's going to be a number on there. Because that has would to be, be a number, out of right. It's just questioning what number they want to put on so we sure. can tell them ahead of time. Right? Yeah, well, that's, that's fine, too. Just any of those permutations and combinations. I don't think we need to vet everybody no. again uh, that was with us last year. We need to be specific about who should be vetted. And, again, to let us know if there's some way that we can judge we're doing the correct job by giving us either a dollar ceiling to work for mm -hmm. or uh, some sort of a of a uh, percent of the total projected budget of the town that we should work for and giving it back to you after we, we looked at it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, Thank you. I don't see where we can do that. Once again, it's the will of the voters as to well, I mean, it, what it's, dollar amount. I mean, it's your warrant. They, you can put whatever number on there if you want. I mean, he's yeah. right. You could cap everybody off if you want, but we kind of need to know that when we're sending them the letter saying now's the time to make your request. Yeah. When we get them all back, we'll know where everybody sits. I mean, as far as percentage of the town's budget 
I, I don't think we can really do that all as easy as it sounds, but so, you, so if, if you but. Don't put a, a, a ceiling on it, then is there any reason at all to even vet it? If I ask for a thousand dollars and I'm not doing something for the town as far as a, 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 an agency that's giving a food bank or something else, mm -hmm. and uh, if I'm asking for a thousand dollars and we don't. You can say, look, we have other things. We have to hit 80,000 or 1.5%. Mm. And so we're going to have to not give you that because we have more important things. Together, it has to e equal the sum. If we're going to say we can't make anything, well, the th vetting, there's though, no just, reason to vet. I mean, the vetting, I think, will helps your committee, which you did a, a fine job last year. It helps your committee make a recommendation. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, the, the vetting and is And put a important. number down there. Now, the town can change that if they wish. Well, it, the only way the town's going to change it is if they put their original because remember you can never increase Add. the warrant article so right. the only way that's going to happen is if you put the original warrant article you put the original amount on and then you guys make your recommendations but but you do have the right to flatline everybody and only put on the warrant you know like you have with departments right. in the past you don't have to put yeah. their request on correct but we kind of need to know what you're going to do as we prep this letter that's going to go with the timeline that's what i'm saying it's it's hard to send out a letter saying send in your budget it's similar to the department heads one of the next questions i'm going to ask you is you know, as I'm sending a memo to the department head saying your department is, you know, your budget is now due February 9th, the Board of Selectmen would like to see what? You know, 1% increases, no salary increases, flat line. I mean, we got to give them some guidance. Correct. Right? Exactly. So that's, Thank I you. guess that's what we're looking for. Um, and because the first deadline is not until February 2nd, if you want to give it some thought, we can put it on the first agenda in January. And as long as we get those letters out that very next day, that will still give them a month to get them back to you. All right, but you need to kind of good. think about what you want to do overall. Yeah. So we'll try to get the letter out. We don't meet Christmas Day. Right. So your next meeting would be January. Second. Right. So, I, I mean, we could get the letter. It's a, it's a basic letter. I mean, the letter is all but written. It's just I need to know what you want, where you'd like to see these social services and even your departments come in at. Okay. Okay. So we need to decide that and think about it in a minute. Hello, Lois Mishu, Town of Act and Cemetery Committee. I'm just updating you. We got the GPS. Unfortunately, the batteries didn't come with it, and we're not sure how we're going to mark that out, but that's a different story. What kind of batteries do you need? Uh, <laughs> they have the one where you can actually plug into it and recharge, but Roland actually put another set of what they call into it right now. He's actually dealing with it and making sure If you bring sure it back it to me, I'll make sure it has batteries that work. I didn't take it out of the box. I well, assumed it had batteries. The, the town will certainly purchase them, but it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, you can use double A battery, alkaline double A batteries, lithium batteries. Which we have in my office if you need some. A rechargeable battery pack, which, which is what we would prefer. <laughs> a rechargeable battery pack is an additional expense. Right. And which I, I guess ourselves, we really would prefer that only because we have to bring back the information back here. To you guys, actually, to Kenny's office or Jen's, depending upon which direction this is actually going to go in. Well, we, yeah, we need to talk about that before you start. We don't want the information yeah, but going I'm just in a lot saying, of different whichever, directions. Whichever direction it happens to have to go in when we bring it back, whoever has to handle that, that's what the direction we're looking at. The other thing is, is that they just to update you. We right now we're at we're at 83 cemeteries, and um, we found two other local veterans that I didn't know about until we went to measure out the local cemeteries and I truly apologize that we didn't know about them and we weren't told about them we made sure that they got flags we just have to put holders out for them at this point in the spring um, we're working on some of that right now I guess to add on to it budgeting if a, if a committee wants to up their budget are you gonna actually limit to what we can do or how is that actually going to work? well that's what we were deciding how much we were going to allow departments to increase if if at all okay. but it certainly if there's an increase you should state why okay the increase that we're looking at is because we're just now starting to do the work and things are really going on the roll obviously we had to buy buy equipment and do different things this year that we hadn't obviously for the last past few years we hadn't i hadn't had the help and we had you guys hadn't had the committee to do this type of work too right. Um, Steve and myself and the rest of the group are actually going to have a list of why and how much and why kind of deal. Mm -hmm. It will probably increase. Um, we're looking at doubling, just to let you know. 
It, it's at 27 now. Okay. Well, and, and you'll get say, you'll get a memo in the timeline okay. from the board. But I, I just mean, in all fairness, just they haven't decided what you know. Yeah. Well, that's it. I just wanted to let you know because of everything that's happening and everything that's going on, we're looking at doubling. So that's just something to be aware of. Also, where we're state mandated, I don't know how that falls in. Also, we're state. You know, it's something that by the state law we have to do. So I'm not sure how that actually falls in with you guys because most of the boards that were made, are, you know. Are, I don't believe are state guidelines. I could be wrong. I said, but ours happens to be state guidelines. So I'm not really sure how that falls in to what you guys are thinking too. But I wanted to update you. I didn't want to leave you out in the blue. I didn't want the end of the year ending like I didn't let you all know what's going on. But this is where we're at. We're also talking about building a, um, a travel trailer. One of the guys that are actually on the board, he does this for other boards and, and he does it for other things. Him and his girlfriend actually go around and do different cemetery works and he's suggesting to, to do it like a travel trailer. In other words, we put all like the lawnmowers, anything we use, raking, um, weed whackers, anything we use would be in this particular trailer. So as we travel from cemetery to cemetery, we'd be able to take that with us and have the equipment there. And it doesn't, and it's not very costly. It's just something that we're talking about, and we just started talking about it public a couple, three meetings ago. Just wanted to let you know. So it is, it is a process, and we are working on it. Okay. It's we have been meeting except for this month. We met every month since. So good. It's been a great committee. Thank you. Thank for you for all your time. Work. Have a nice holiday. Thank you. So put your uh, check work, put a um, purchase order in a, for if you want to do the rechargeable battery. I'm yeah, not going to automatically order them. So when just, he, br when if he you brings, need them, when he brings it back. The only reason I say that I just want to make sure is, it's not is, is because um, if by chance we're down low on the battery, no, we I don't, don't make no it. No one's where questioning, we're and I just want to make sure you follow up and yep. put the request in. Old business, <clears throat> 2018-19 deadlines. So I think we pretty much um, handled that with the conversation with Mr. Williams. Okay. The board have any concerns with this timeline? No. So no. we'll prep a generic memo, wait for your final okay with the January meeting, and get something ready to go out to everybody. Okay. Okay, sign the personnel policy. So at the f December 5th meeting, you made a motion and seconded that uh, page three so the emergency closing employees may be excused from work due to severe weather or public related emergencies at the discretion of the town administrator employees will receive their regular compensation for such closings only if the closing occurs during the normally scheduled work hours this shall pertain to early closures and full day closures um, it is dated uh, amended 12 5 because you actually made a motion that day so I just need you to sign the last page Did someone ask a question the board go ahead Susan Meehan um, taxpayer uh, we have a board of selectmen town meeting form of government and what that is is if we spend even a penny it should go to the taxpayers so a few weeks ago you had and I guess right now you're going to vote on it in regards to the snow days. A couple of months ago, you did a bereavement one, and these benefits do cost money for the taxpayers. So as a result, it's supposed to be brought to the taxpayer. The way it's set up is that typically we can't even get up and speak until public comment. And so as a result, it's a done deal by the time somebody gets up to speak. So what I would like to um, bring out is the fact that we do have that form of government and that it should be presented at a town meeting with warrant. Because we are spending taxpayers' dollars. I can dollars. see that, but they're tax dollars that would be already being, been spent because it's a regularly scheduled work day. But why um, wasn't this put? I'm not also, saying that they don't deserve to be paid. The vote was on the budget that was passed. It's not oh, they're yeah. not spending extra money. They're not spending extra money. Yeah, they are. It doesn't, they're not, it doesn't no. change the bottom line in the budget. So, for example, let's just say that the office. And office, what about the bereavement? Also? The, so the, not extra money. It's not. So the office, the, the office assistant, because this doesn't affect salary employees. So we're taking look at the office assistant position. 
Okay, so the office assistant position, if we budget for 35 hours a week times 52 weeks, that number that you see is what goes in on the warrant, and that's the number that's appropriated at the town meeting. We can't go over that amount for any reason, right? So if the board puts these policies, and they have the right to put a personnel policy in place, if they choose to pay their employees, that's part of what the 52 weeks that was appropriated. It's the budget that was already approved by the voters. Well, let me ask a question. Is this only for salaried employees or hourly employees? Hourly. This affects hourly, then it does affect, it is a cost to the taxpayers. It's not. Because it, it is. It's not additional money. It's, it's money that's already in the budget. I still think it's a benefit that should be brought to the taxpayers. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't matter. But these, I thought people, everything was when, supposed to be brought when to When you're the hourly, taxpayer. you depend on that paycheck. And because it snowed. I depend on my paycheck, too. So and, no, nothing's different yeah. here. Okay, but if they don't work that day currently, before we sign this policy, they don't get paid. If you don't work, you don't get paid. For a snow day, they didn't have any control over. But and they so, can but make they up still the have time. bills. They know. I don't think you can't. But that's not the issue. I'm not saying that they shouldn't get paid. I can get clarification. What I'm if, saying if the board is wishes. that I mean, it's, you, it's money right. that is supposed to go to the taxpayers. Which was, and they are supposed to um, either, you know, have questions, come up, ask questions. I'm not saying people don't deserve to get paid. I absolutely believe people should deserve to get paid. I mean, I believe that. And I don't even think it's a bad benefit, but I think the point is it's supposed to be a benefit that is brought to the people because it does cost money. I know you say it doesn't. And, but it, and, and not to interrupt, but the, the board, I mean, we can, I can certainly get you something in writing. I mean, it's a very simple question. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the budget is approved, line item is approved from the, from the townspeople. It's your job to oversee personnel and department heads, and you, you have you know, authority to, to use those lines as you so choose. I mean, every town has personnel policies that say different things. I mean, if you want something in writing to, to back that up, you know, it's, it, it's not an issue at all. But, but they are right. I mean, in this case, they don't, if the, the line, if the amount was appropriated by the voters, it's up to the board to determine how it's spent. It's all based on how the line items at the warrant are written. Well, the way I also see it is, yes, salary, obviously, that's, we don't even have to discuss that. But an hourly employee, are they full-time employees? Are they part-time employees? If they're part-time, you know, these are things that the taxpayer may want to discuss. That's all I'm saying. And the form of government that we have is a board of selectmen slash town meeting. Right. I mean, it's almost as if you're asking, so the, there's people, we have a snowstorm. I'm not saying okay. they shouldn't no, no, be no, paid. I'm just I'm talking about the road commissioners the in their crew. We pay their crew time and a half when they go over well, a certain amount of time. that's an interesting question. So it, it's, it's the other way around. I'm not going to say, wait, don't go I don't plowing think because we don't want to pay you time I'm and a half. I'm not saying it's, people don't yeah, deserve to get paid. It's I am an advocate of people she's not, getting she's not paid. She's not, I don't think she's questioning the policy. We're not questioning policy. that line item at the, at the time of the snowstorm that they're getting paid overtime. And that, that's can't. actually written in the Warren article too, the time and a half over 40 hours. But, and, and I don't think, I mean, she's not, I don't think she's questioning the, the actual policy. She's questioning your right to put that in the policy. That, you know what I mean? She's but questioning. Okay. It should be brought to the people. Right. That's which, all I'm saying. Which, it, she, I mean, she's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and I and I, I mean, I can show you. Know what I mean? Well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that your opinion is not correct. What I'm saying well, is that it sounded like that. Yeah, Susan, that's not what I meant. What I'm saying is that the voters vote on the Warren articles. The board of selectmen have the right to spend it how they see fit. They also have the way that Acton votes. They vote on general government as one line. You have the breakdown of all the departments. The town can move money. I mean, the selectmen can vote to move money in between those departments. I mean, they have the authority to spend the money that was appropriated by the townspeople, which is what they're doing. But again, I mean, we can happily, you know, put it out there and get a uh, get a legal opinion if you'd like. But which is going to cost money? No. If we send it to Maine <laughs> Municipal, it's not going to cost you any money because that's part of your okay. dues. Okay. Mean, okay. So, just to that's all. Show. Thank you. Thank you. 
so we're tabling the signing. Well, you already you already made a motion Ready. on December fifth, okay. and you we'll already I mean you've already approved the policy, so we can get follow up information. But Williams, that's, that's I just wanted to make a Oop. quick a quick uh, question or comment. That is, in the future, is it possible that we might be able to consider PTO as the only way that uh, you get time off is by taking your PTO time? If you want to go see Aunt Clara in Michigan or somebody dies in your family or you're sick with pneumonia, you take your PTO time. And it's not differentiated. You can take it for whatever you want to take it. Thank you. Do we make a motion to sign this? You made a motion on the. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. thought. You can certainly thought rescind that or hold it if you'd like. Me over here. <laughs> Sorry. What? I heard. Thought I heard something. Okay. Town clerk, tax collector, registrar of voters, and town administrator job description. Um, I apologize, but I had lots and lots of notes on these, and I left them at home by accident. So we're gonna have to table this. Um, is that okay with you guys? It's fine with me. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, sign intercept policy. So also at the December 5th meeting, uh, after conversations with uh, Chief Johnson, you agreed to support a $375 intercept policy for the paramedic. <coughs> so that's um, essentially just putting it in the format that the town uses. Uh, the chief did review it. There's been no changes to it since your conversation with him. Okay. Do you have a motion to sign the intercept? We didn't. Did we already vote on that? I believe they approved it on the fifth. Yeah. We did. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, it stated the yeah. fifth. Thank you. Okay. New business. We have a memo from the treasurer. So this is in regards to the fund balance policy. Um, she asked that um, you review it and when you have um, possibly, you have her job description too that uh, you're reviewing, I yes. sent that to you via email. So maybe we could put that and this policy on the same agenda and she could come in and speak to you about it, but it's um, requesting the town put together some sort of policy for the fund balance. Okay, just so the people at home know, this is, um, it just, it's, it's, there's a lot of words here, but the outline is a purpose and it describes, has a description, a low balance effect, a target balance, and why have a target balance. Um, so we're, we'll read this over, and um, if, maybe I'll read it in full after I've looked at it all. And it has an example um, mathematic computations for you. So moving on to the old patrol car. So after speaking with the sheriff's department, uh, mm -hmm. we originally reached out to a couple of surrounding towns that we thought uh, might be in the um, might need a, a patrol car that was a little newer than the one they were currently using. Uh, we're finally getting back to some of those towns and they're essentially not interested. So the Shapley administrator reached out to me and wants uh, permission to uh, go out to sealed bid for the vehicle. Um, I did reach out to Major Mitchell to ask him for some you know, permission to come down and take some pictures of it now that it's been stripped out, mileage, get all the basics. Um, with your permission, uh, Carla and I will draft a sealed bid for you to review um, their, you know, what they're saying is a minimum of maybe a thousand dollars. They say the car is not worth a whole lot based on what it's been through and the miles on it, but certainly uh, want to get your input on what you think about that. Sure. Yeah. Fine with me. If we can get a thousand dollars seems. Yep. What year is it again? Yeah, I had to quote me on it. When did we sign the contract? It's got, oh, let's see, so it's 17, so it's got to be a third, say, 12, 13, got close to 100,000 miles four, on it. Four Sounds right, 12. I'll get all the details. We won't put the specs out to bid until you review it, but okay. um, I think we were kind of talking about offering it to the surrounding towns for 500 or 1,000, and no one really bid on it, so um, it's stripped down now, so anybody could, could purchase it if they okay. wanted it. Yeah. Okay. 
full-time firefighter policy. Okay, so this is, uh, I understand that, um, at least you kind of want to, met with the liaison department head and kind of explained this that there's no date on it because I wasn't sure where you were starting with it okay so Chief Johnson and I talked a little bit about putting um, Sharon Jackson who's a paramedic on um, a certain type of schedule that will allow the fire department to have about a hundred percent paramedic coverage and I thought that was a great idea and it also allows him time to work with the other um, staff on the days that Sharon was working. So um, this, this type of schedule fluctuates enough that um, creates the pay schedule to fluctuate as well. So we needed to create a policy in order to, um, I guess, legally pay her a consistent amount of hours worked each week and that equals out after a month is it about a month or eight weeks eight weeks, eight eight weeks. weeks. okay and uh, chief johnson and michelle worked on this together this is something also what surrounding towns do to um did you want to get up and explain some more it sounded like a great idea to me steve will chief will talk a little bit more about it good evening everybody uh steve johnson uh, fire chief so what we're doing is um, we're actually kind of falling in line with industry standard. Uh, most of your full-time fire departments work a schedule that's called a 42. There's a number of variations on this schedule, but basically what it boils down to is uh, in this case, we're looking to put our, not just Sharon, but if any other full-time firefighter that we could hire down the road, should we hire one? Um, you put them on, they work a 24-hour shift, have two days off, a 24-hour shift, have four days off. And it's an eight day cycle because you have basically the four days that you're you know considered you're on time and then the four days off so what that happens is that every eight weeks is when you would figure out is the oops sorry <laughs> is the average um, and the employee average is 42 hours a week uh, every week for those uh, over that eight week period and for consistency uh, for the town as well as consistency um, instability for the employee it, what it does is it just offers them to allow to count on you know getting the same check every week and so they're not getting paid, you know, for hours that they didn't work. They're, um, uh, did I say that right? So they're not getting paid for hours that they didn't work, but they're also not going to get paid for hours that they weren't there, et cetera, et cetera. And what this does is it also allows us to offer, it's a very attractive schedule, which is why 90% of your fire departments throughout the country have gone to these schedules. And it allows us to be more attractive to the per diems, and we're seeing that result. And because of that result, we've been having a really hard time getting above 90% paramedic coverage for the town. And by doing this and being more attractive to the other per diems, they're willing to step in and to work some of the other schedule shifts that Sharon have been working. So now we're going to be pretty consistently at 100% paramedic coverage. And as you were mentioning also, now I get to see faces that I didn't get to see because my schedule was always with Sharon. So now I'm going to get to work with the other per diems, and, which is going to really make a difference and make making sure that in consistency of operation uh, for the f fire department as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a win-win on every, every angle we look at, so. Should I read this policy to the people? Aye. It's quite, yeah. it's short enough. Town of Acton, Maine, full-time firefighter schedule, parentheses, 42 hour. The purpose. It is the purpose of this policy to define the work schedule for all full-time firefighter paramedics with the exception of the fire chief for act and fire rescue. This schedule. This schedule is prevalent throughout the fire service and is a 42 hour per week schedule averaged over an eight week period. Shifts will run at 7 Oh, seven hundred. <laughs> I don't want to say this correctly. With the employee working 24 hour shifts, the schedule will be 24 hours on duty slash 48 hours off duty slash 24 hours on duty slash 96 hours off duty. In parentheses, one day on, two days off, one day on, four days off. Pay. 
The employee's pay will be their hourly rate based on the 42 hour a week average. Any hours worked above and beyond the employee's regular scheduled hours will be paid at their hourly rate based on time worked. Examples of above and beyond would be overshifts, mandatory trainings, emergency recall for incidents, and all other hours deemed necessary by the fire chief. Asterix. This change in the work schedule does not change or alter any other policy, benefit, or accrual set forth by the Town of Acton. This policy only changes the work schedule from the current scheduled worked to a 42-hour schedule consistent with industry standard. And you worked with Michelle to come up with this? I uh, know he came up with it. She reviewed it and I okay. sent you her response. Okay. Yep. Her response was favorable. Mm -hmm. yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I don't see any issues with it. No, it sounds good. Want a motion? Okay. Yes, I'd like a motion. I'll make a motion that we adopt the new 42 hour uh, schedule as outlined for the final no. amendment. I'll second that. All in favor? So I think he wanted this effective January 1st, and I can uh, prepare one with today's date on it for next the next meeting, but he's all set to start in January? Yeah. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to review the use of the town hall policy. So going in order, this is the next one. This one was last updated in... 2015 you wanted to go through it or if you had a chance to look at it I, I did yeah. um, it it seems pretty straightforward um, I think the rules are posted are they in the uh, mm -hmm. kitchen in the kitchen uh, the only thing I did see that seemed redundant was at the end of the second page um, we, it repeats, the Board of Selectmen reserves the right to waive fees for nonprofit organizations' events. And then it says it again in the next paragraph, notwithstanding the foregoing, the Board of Selectmen reserves the right to waive fees. Oh. So just take it out of that last okay. sentence out of that paragraph. But everything else seemed okay. And I, mean, I don't know if you want to revisit increasing any fees. Um, I don't think we've had any issues that... Um, no nope. people pay and no damage is done we haven't had any I think that one's fine so yeah. keep the fees yeah. the same That's good yep just change what you would what you would mentioned and the rest of it's fine just the very last <coughs> and the office manager can be changed <coughs> in the paragraph <coughs> yes Yes. In addition, <laughs> all oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah. The door key to the town administrator. Oh. Do we actually um, number three three under the kitchen rules? Do we want them to put the dishes away? Countertops, used kitchenware, and put away. So clean it and put it away. In the kitchen floor, stove, countertop, and used to shore. Yep. So the next one we're going to review is request for information. Does that sound right? Yep. Okay. Public comment? William speaking as a citizen and as a physician, I'd like to thank the Board of Selectmen. I'd like to thank especially the Chief. Uh, this is probably the greatest quality improvement in living in a town of Acton that we've had in the last four years that I've been here. And to have this quality of medical service available now 24 hours a day is a real boon and we should be very, very proud of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>
Brendan Meehan. Um, I have a, a job title I'd like to share with everybody, and it's resident taxpayer. And my job description is to oversee the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator. I just wanted to let you all know that your violence, your intimidation, and your corruption are not going to deter me for doing my job. Also, uh, tampering and, dis and destroying public record is a felony. I don't have a clue. Okay. Yeah, we don't know what you're talking about. So, announcements. Town Hall Library is closed on December 26th. Transfer Station closed on December 25th and January 1st. Dog licenses expire December 31st, so be sure to come in and register your dog. 2005 Ford Ambulance Bid to be opened on January 16th. And we have upcoming meetings is um, the Forest Conservation Committee is meeting on the 19th at 7 p.m. And the Board of Selectmen will not meet on Christmas Day, but we wish you a Merry Christmas. Any other announcements? Okay. Nope, that's it. Just wish everybody a Merry Christmas and stay safe during the holidays. Yep. Good night. Good night. Make a motion we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor.